you know Douglas City Museum and Alyssa is here as being our wonderful camera woman. And today we are here to talk about William Henry Seward. For those of you not in Alaska, Monday is actually Seward's Day here in Alaska. It's a very unique Alaskan holiday. So in honor of that, we wanted to talk about the man that the holiday is named after. So we are outside here in front of the state capitol next to the William Henry Seward statue. Now, William Seward was born in New York in 1801, and he was trained and educated as a lawyer. He, in the course of his life, he was a lawyer, he was a governor, a senator, both at the state and federal level, and secretary of state for President Abraham Lincoln from 1860 to 1869. During his tenure in office, he was was a staunch expansionist, meaning that he firmly believed that Americans had the right and the ability to acquire large plots of land. And the ideal dream was that America actually encompassed all of North America. Now, as many people know, that did not happen. However, he did negotiate the purchase of Alaska in 1867. Around that time, it became known that Russia could possibly use the money, and he began negotiations with government. He started with an offer of five million dollars and they came to the eventual number of 7.2 million. Now that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but in today's money that's about 119 million. Still not a lot when you look at how much gold and other materials have been mined out of Alaska as well as its current oil production. So at the time it was often labeled Seward's Folly or Seward's Icebox by his political rivals with the idea that there was no real reason history has had the last laugh and that there was a lot to be had here they just didn't know it at the time. A very interesting thing about Seward's history is the night that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated that plot was originally meant for three different people. We really only hear about Abraham Lincoln because he's the only one who died but John Wilkes Booth originally planned to kidnap Abraham Lincoln when he realized that that wasn't going to be a possibility he changed to an assassination plot. He was able, he enlisted the help of several friends, and George Adzerat was meant to assassinate Vice President Andrew Johnson, and Lewis Powell was meant to assassinate William Seward. As many of you, of you probably know, really only John Wilkes Booth was uh, successful. George Adzerat gave up, he fled and was afraid, and didn't follow any of the plans. Lewis Powell did get into uh, William Seward's home. Seward had been injured in a carriage accident a few days before the attempted assassination and was recuperating at home. When Powell came into the house, he was able to do so under the guise of bringing medicine to the injured man. Seward's son stopped him in the hallway and unable to get past him, he did attack his son and hit him with the butt of his rifle, which then misfired. He burst his way into the sick bed and proceeded to stab Seward in the face and neck five times before he was pulled off of him. Seward would have those scars for the rest of his life, not only from the carriage accident which broke his jaw, but the scars from the stabbing in both his face and his neck. Interestingly enough, there are only two photographs of Seward with his scars because he was very sensitive to the fact that he had them and prohibited any reproductions, any paintings, uh, photographs, anything like that, that would show those imperfections. He saw them as a badge of weakness, whereas other people, especially native Alaskans here, as, saw it as a sign of courage and bravery and that he faced death and beat it. Another interesting tidbit that really ties into this statue here is one, the artist did include his scars and the broken jaw. So what we have here is one of the few depictions of Seward as he actually looked when he visited here in 1869. After the purchase, Seward did do a tour around Alaska, visiting several native communities and other larger towns around Alaska. He's become famous because at Tongas Village in 1869, he was received as a chief and a, as a visiting dignitary. As such, Clinket culture dictates that there is gift giving and a lot of food presented. Now the idea is, is that you are meant to reciprocate that generosity and that courtesy after you have received it. Now Seward being a white man from New York had no idea that that was part of the culture. And as
as a result, he just received all of the gifts he thought he deserved, gratefully, possibly, and took them all home. By the 1880s, it was obvious that Seward was not going to be returning any of that courtesy or gratitude or generosity, and a shame totem pole was created in Tongass Village to remind those, excuse us, we are outside, <laughs> to remind visitors that he had yet to pay his debt. About 60 years later, that original totem pole had deteriorated, and most of the people of Tongass Village had relocated to other areas, mostly Saxman, which was nearby. So a new totem pole was commissioned and built there in the 1940s. Flash forward to 2014. That second totem pole is disintegrating, and there was discussion about the possibility of building a new one. When it was reminded that Seward still hadn't paid his debt, he still owed a lot to the people of Saxman and the people of Tongass Village. So the city of Saxman commissioned a Clinkett artist, Stephen Jackson, to build a new totem pole that was actually unveiled a few months before this statue in 2017. As a reminder of all that Seward took and never gave back. When this statue was dedicated, they did mention how in the purchase of Alaska, Seward did ignore the native Alaskan claims on their land that he was claiming to purchase. And at that time period, that wasn't really a rhetoric that was important or considered. So whenever we're studying history, we always wanna make sure that we're looking at the history from different standpoints, especially as museum folk, it's very easy to look at history through a one particular lens. And it's very important that you often do your best to step outside that lens and look at that story from different standpoints. So we're here on Seward's day, talking about Seward, but also remembering that he wasn't perfect, just like most historical figures, and had his own interesting history. So thank you everybody for joining us again and braving the outdoors and the snow, which we are having snow outside here today. And tune into the next video. Thank you again for watching.